My name is Ania Kebe, and let's just go straight into addressing the name situation. I know that there are a lot of two-syllable people here, Vision, Lisa, Jeffrey, Anyekeme. It's quite melodic, actually, if you think about it, but I know it's an uncommon name. I'm Nigerian, um, and actually, funny story, I, when I was in college, uh, like I said, I'm Nigerian, so I tend to be on the late side from time to time. I was taking a class with this really eclectic professor, and one day I was late to class, so I'm walking down the hallway to my class, and I hear what sounds like chanting coming from the classroom, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what is this professor doing to us today? <laughs> oh God. Um, and it sounds like, da na da na da na da na And so I walk in, and then it turns out that they were chanting, the professor had told the entire class to chat my name so they could learn how to say it properly. And that was, still, <laughs> I thought that was so weird, but also really, really cute. Um, I'm not going to ask you guys to do that today, but just know that that's available if you're interested. <laughs> um, so my name is Anyekame. And I am kind of new in this space. I don't think very many people here know me. So I'll just give you the official bio before I go into why I'm here today. Right? OK, so I am a transformational life coach and motivational speaker based in New York City. I have studied mindset and energy for over a decade, including classes in Eastern and Western religion at Columbia University, where I got my undergraduate degree, numerology in Guatemala, and countless seminars and courses, including the ICF certification. I have an MBA from the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, and I have worked in several, several industries, from consulting to investment banking, early stage investing, retail, fashion, and tech, in almost every level from associate to the C-suite. Okay, now that we're done with the bio, <laughs> let's go into why I'm here today. Why am I here today? Um, I just came by to tell you guys a story. Just one story, if you'll indulge me. Anyone, story time? Yes, yes, okay, wonderful. All right, so like I mentioned, I'm Nigerian, born and raised. And like many other Nigerians, when I turned 11, I went to boarding school. My boarding school is one of the strictest schools. It was a Catholic Jesuit school, very well known for its rigorous academics, amongst other things. The Nigerian educational system is really similar to the British, so really similar to Harry Potter. <laughs> We have prefects, a head boy, and a head girl, all in their fifth year. So I come in at 11, I'm at this boarding school, and I meet who was the head girl at the time, and I think to myself, this woman is amazing. She, girl, this girl is amazing. <laughs> She's so kind, so smart, she's just so on top of everything. And this thought crystallized in my mind, when I'm in my fifth year, I'm going to be her. I'm going to be the head girl. That became the vision that was guiding me throughout my time in boarding school. Every decision that I made was with that plan and that vision in mind. Is this what the head girl will do? Anyone have that experience? This became my north star. You have a goal, and it guides every step that you take. That was what I was living through. What ended up happening was I became top of my class at school. I led our service program at the boarding school. I became captain of the soccer team. I was well liked by my teachers. I was as involved as any student could be, all in service of this goal, being the head girl. So when my fifth year comes around, I'm, along with five other girls, nominated to give a speech for the head girl physician, which was really exciting. 
Uh, so we had election night where we all gave our speeches. And as part of that process, each of us was asked a question by a member of the student body. And before I go into the rest of this story, just a quick time out to give you more context about this situation. By this time, I'm 15 years old. I have two other brothers who are at the boarding school with me, one in his final year preparing for college applications. I mentioned earlier that my boarding school was very strict. If anyone was caught cheating, they would be expelled. No questions asked. All right, so we're back to election night now, and I'm asked the question, if either one of your brothers was caught cheating, knowing that they would be expelled, if you were the head girl, what would you do? And at that time, and even now, honesty was always my thing. I didn't know how to say something just to get through a situation. If I didn't honestly, truly believe it, if it wasn't true, I wouldn't say it. I stuck by what I believed and I would say what was true to me. And so that's how I answered the question. I said I didn't believe that either of my brothers would ever be caught cheating. But if they were, I knew that I couldn't bring myself to report them knowing that they would be expelled and their chances at going to college would be completely ruined. I just couldn't do it. And so that's what I said. No significant happenings occurred afterwards. We waited as part of the demo democratic process. <laughs> Students got to vote. And so we waited for a few weeks for the votes to be tallied and the announcements to be made. So we're now on announcement night. 600 students, several teachers, and the principal president of our school gathered in a massive hall, this really long hall that we use anytime we have occasions such as the announcement of prefects. The principal president walks into the room. He greets everyone, says a couple welcome notes, and then he says my name, Anyekeme. And people are shouting, they're clapping, they're cheering, everyone is so excited. And then he shushes everyone. And he asks me to come forward. So I walk the long, long hall all the way up to the front. And the way that he said my name sounded so ominous that I was already beginning to be worried about what was going to happen. When I get to the front, the principal president says to me and to the entire auditorium, Anyekame won this head girl election by a landslide. There's more cheering, people are clapping, everyone's so excited, and he shushes everyone again. But I'm not going to make her the head girl because of the answer she gave on election night. And then he turns and he looks at me and he says, I'm going to give you the opportunity to answer that question again. I'm 15 years old. Between me and something that I had worked for, for five years, in that moment was where I could make a decision that could go either way. What was I going to do? <laughs> I turned and I looked to him and I said, I stand by what I said at Manifesto Night. If either of my brothers was caught cheating, which I don't think would ever happen, I could not report them knowing they would be expelled. And the principal president simply said to me, you will not be the head girl of the school, and dismissed me to my seat. As I'm walking back, I'm crying. My friends are trying to comfort me, making the long walk all the way back to where I was sitting. That moment 
was one of the most traumatic moments <laughs> of my life. I was 15 years old in one of the strictest boarding schools in a country where emotional and mental health is not prioritized. And I was going through something nobody else had gone through before. <laughs> that experience led me into a depression that lasted for two years. I had to take a gap year before I applied to college because I just wasn't well enough to do that. It was a very, very tough time. But that experience also catapulted me into the personal development space in a way that never would have happened otherwise. I was introduced to the secret, therapy, meditation, countless teachers, and eventually to Mind Valley. That experience led me to be here today. And that experience has informed a lot of things that have gone on in my life. Every time that I look back and I process what happened, two recurring themes come to mind. And that's what I'd love to leave with you today. The first is this. It's a question, really. Who are you when your back's against the wall? Who are you when everyone's looking or when no one at all is looking? Who are you when what stands between you and your goal is an obstacle that requires you to compromise your integrity? Because who you are in that moment is who you really are. The second is this. No matter how painful, difficult, sad, traumatic an experience you've been through or your current situation is, no matter how difficult it is, it is not the end of your story. Rock bottom very often becomes a solid foundation to build a brand new chapter. You've heard the metaphors, a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, a phoenix rises from the ashes, coal under pressure, what does that make? Diamonds. In a similar way, everything you're going through has the potential for something beautiful afterwards. And you, with a capital Y-O-U, will come out of it in the end. Thank you.